Well, we conducted an individual patient data meta-analysis of all the large beta blocker trials with over 18,000 patients in this uh, meta-analysis to investigate uh, some of the potential mechanisms by which beta blockers exerted their effects. Uh, so we know that beta blockers block the beta adrenergic receptor and a lot of people thought that they uh, brought their benefits in heart failure by inhibiting this uh, sympathetic overactivity. But beta blockers of course also just reduce heart rate and we know that evabradine also reduces heart rate uh, and uh, produces beneficial outcomes. So how much of the benefit of beta blockers was due to heart rate reduction uh, and how much was due just to the dose of the beta blocker that you use? Now clearly there is a relationship between the amount of beta blocker you use uh, and the effect on heart rate so I'm not sure that we can answer the question at a fundamental scientific level but we can I think provide useful information for clinical practice. So, as I say, the study design was an individual patient data meta-analysis, so it's randomised controlled trials, um, uh, and we aggregate all of the data at baseline and intermediate uh, outcomes so that we can look at the effect of the beta blocker on heart rate and the dose of beta blocker that was achieved, uh, and then finally the long-term uh, mortality of the patients in the study. And of particular interest because previously we demonstrated that patients with atrial fibrillation weren't, uh, uh, didn't appear to benefit from a beta blocker. We were interested what was the relationship specifically of the beta blocker to outcome in sinus rhythm uh, and what was the outcome, this interaction between dose and heart rate for those patients in atrial fibrillation. First of all, we're looking at the baseline heart rate, and what you can see from the baseline heart rate is patients with a slower heart rate had a better outcome. On the other hand, if we look at the patients with atrial fibrillation, that wasn't true. There really wasn't a relationship between the, the baseline heart rate and outcome. If anything, the people with a slower heart rate had a slightly worse outcome, so exactly the opposite of what you saw uh, in sinus rhythm. So that's the first thing that we noticed. The second thing was in giving uh, the beta blocker to the patients with atrial fibrillation there was no benefit and that wasn't uh, in any way related to heart rate. Likewise in the patients with sinus rhythm it, it didn't matter what the starting heart rate was between 70 and 90 beats per minute uh, there was a similar benefit from the beta blocker so those patients with the faster heart rates didn't get a bigger benefit than the people with only moderately elevated heart rates. Of course, we excluded people with uh, bradycardia, but we had plenty of people with heart rates, 65, 70 beats per minute. Those didn't seem to benefit any less than people with higher heart rates. So that was the second thing that we found. So the next thing that we looked at was the relationship between the heart rate attained on therapy. Um, and uh, the first thing we noticed, interestingly, was that even if you took the full dose of placebo, you did better than if you, uh, if you couldn't tolerate the full dose of the placebo. So that was quite an interesting and still unexplained phenomenon. But in general, patients who take the full doses of medication, they're probably a little bit less sick uh, and therefore it's just an association. The next thing we looked at was the relationship between heart rate uh, attained on the treatment and outcome and we showed that those patients who got a slower heart rate had a better outcome. That would be partly because the, these were the patients who took the full doses of their beta blockers and were uh, adhered well to, uh, to their treatment. So we have this, uh, that's why scientifically you can't really separate the issues of dose and heart rate. But I think the heart rate uh, message is an important one because the clinician can't be sure what dose of beta blocker the patient's actually taking, but they can know exactly what the heart rate is. And if you haven't achieved a heart rate, I think, of uh, 60 beats per minute at rest uh, with a beta blocker, then you should be thinking about what else you should be doing for the patient. Should you be raising the dose of the beta blocker to slow the heart rate further? Uh, should you be counselling the patient and making sure that they are adherent to therapy 
or should you be thinking about evabradine to slow the heart rate further? So I think it has a very important message for clinical practice, even though it hasn't entirely uh, settled the scientific argument. On balance, statistically, if you put everything into the model, heart rate matters more than the dose of the beta blocker. And actually, I think clinicians like that message. I think it's a good message for the clinicians. If you target uh, getting the heart rate down to 60, 65 beats per minute, it's probably the optimal. Maybe even a little bit slower down at, some people would say 55 beats per minute is, uh, is even better. But if you can target getting the, uh, the, the heart rate down to that level, uh, that will be the best outcome for the patients. Yes, we do need to, uh, to look at uh, this more deeply. Um, and there are other ways that we can begin to look at this. Uh, we haven't yet done the analysis of the patients uh, taking uh, who have got pacemakers. So we've got a group of patients where uh, the dose of the beta blocker and the heart rate are uh, separated. So uh, we, we can begin to dissect this problem better. We also have other drugs for reducing heart rate, in particular evabradine, uh, and we're reanalyzing uh, evabradine data uh, to find out whether that will give us more clues on how much of this benefit of beta blockers is pure heart rate reduction and how much uh, is beta adrenergic receptor blockade. Um, and of course, neither of these drugs, as far as we know, work in patients with atrial fibrillation, so that makes it even more interesting. And it also throws up this other question of if heart rate reduction is so important and beta blockers reduce heart rate in atrial fibrillation, why don't beta blockers help you if you're in AF? So it may be that the beta blockers are equally effective in sinus rhythm and atrial fibrillation, but they also produce harm uh, in uh, patients with atrial fibrillation. Um, we're exploring this further and it does appear that patients with atrial fibrillation are much more prone to nocturnal pauses and those nocturnal pauses may in turn be uh, a trigger for arrhythmias and it may be the beta blockers exacerbate this problem especially in the presence of digoxin. Um, so it may be that we can uh, reveal uh, the benefits of beta blockers in atrial fibrillation either by manipulating the dose of the beta blocker or potentially withdrawing the dose of digoxin to allow especially nocturnal heart rate to rise.